Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with veteran composer and pedal steel guitarist Susan Alcorn. We caught up with her about her new 2023 CD along with upcoming projects as one of the world's premier players of the pedal steel guitar. Having first paid her dues in Texas County and Western bands, she began to expand the vocabulary of her instrument through her study of 20th century classical music, visionary jazz, and world musics. Known for her solo work, she has also collaborated with numerous artists over the years. She has etched quite a path in music. We get into all of this and so much more. Enjoy. But it's great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out for the show. I appreciate it. It was nice to meet you, too. Before we get into your latest album, your newest work, I want to know the last three and a half years was quite a thing for a musician to get through. And I'm curious, how did you survive the pandemic and how did it subsequently change you? Well, I guess for 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 every one of us, that's a, that's kind of a not a not a very short story. So the pandemic happened right after uh, I recorded uh, my Pedernal record, which was released in uh, 2020, late 2020. And uh, but I think the pandemic had uh, a role in that. I, I was hoping to tour with the band, and uh, so that that of course didn't happen. And then uh, when the pandemic, uh, you know, when we when we were all like in our in our homes and and all that, I thought, well, okay, no gigs. I'll I'll do some recording, and I'll so I thought I'd do something, record some things that were uh, difficult for me to play, maybe too difficult, but I'd had plenty of time to to work on them. So I did that, and I worked on a piece by Olivier Messiaen. And uh, which had a lot of very, uh, I guess, kind of fancy footwork, volume-wise, because I have to use a volume pedal. And uh, towards the end of one of the tunes, my my ankle stopped working. I just didn't want to go anywhere. Wow. Uh, I had to have surgery. I had to learn how to walk again. Uh, and I, I couldn't play much pedal steel. So I kind of did that through the most of the pandemic, and then I guess in late 2021, things started kind of happening again, slowly, and then 2022. So I guess that's my pandemic story. <laughs> so talk to me about the new album. Is this an outgrowth of the pandemic? Kind of talk to me about how you artistically put it together. Well, uh, I, I was in Chile in, in 2003 and uh, just sort of fell in love with the uh, a genre of music there called the Nueva Canción, which is kind of a very uh, uh, socially, socially engaged sort of Latin American singer-songwriter kind of music that uh, kind of fuses the kind of the Latin, kind of, the, I guess, a basic Latin American kind of style harmonically with, uh, in Chile's case, uh, Andean folk instruments. Uh, and so I listened to that. I, I played, when I played solo, I played some of that music. So it, it had been in my head. And then... Um, I received a grant, uh, which made it possible me to go down to Chile and get a bunch of musicians together and record an album of uh, some music I'd written somewhat in that vein that uh, sort of uh, combines that style of music with uh, with whatever it is that, that uh, you know, whatever my personal aesthetic is. So, pedal steel guitar is rather unique. Talk to me a little bit about how your music journey began and how it evolved into this instrument and just kind of how how you evolved into being, you know, music being your passion. When I was a kid, I um, I used to uh, kind of play, when I was very little, I used to kind of play the pedals while my mom was 
playing piano and singing church songs. And uh, then when I was five years old, uh, playing with a, a boy near somebody's piano, he bashed my head in against the piano, and I had a concussion. So maybe that gave me a predilection for, for weird music. So basically, uh, I started out, I guess, playing guitar and sometimes singing. Uh, and I liked the pop music of the day, you know, the, the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. And, and then I got into... Uh, Mothers of Invention and uh, uh, and blues very heavily. I was really attracted to blues, so I played blues on electric guitar and acoustic guitar. And I, I also, at the time, kind of like psychedelic music and some of the, I guess, what they'd call hard rock at the time bands like Blue Cheer and. Uh, then when I was 18 or so, I just had this, 18 or 19, I just, I don't know, I just started to get tired of, of I guess, playing the music I was playing, and country music and country rock just seemed so fresh to me. It was like, you know, being in a forest and by a creek and the water's running over rocks or something. And... uh so I did that, and I uh, I went from playing slide guitar, playing blues, to uh, to the dobro, um, um, and then from the dobro, I started playing pedal steel, and that was when I was about twenty one, which is several years ago, <laughs> mm -hmm. and. And I, I played country music, mostly. Uh, what drew me, I guess, to country music was uh, that it was, you know, every, the, the emotions, the feelings are all, the musical statements are very direct. And the people, the musicians who played my instrument, the best ones were playing country music. And so I sort of fell in love with the sound of the pedal steel and also of, of country music, but... I was also listening, you know, to other things and, and playing other kinds of music as well. So what was the first live show that you ever saw that blew you away, that made you think that that's something you would want to do, or just it, it just moved you on a visceral level? Uh, as far as playing music or as far as playing jazz? No, like, like, no, like yeah, any show. I. Sometimes we get pigeonholed in jazz interviews into bringing that genre up specifically, but since you have had other interests and in other genres that have been involved, just in general, what was the first live show that you saw that really moved you? Well, I guess the first live show I saw was my parents taking me to, to see Andy Williams. No, Roger Williams, and that, that didn't do anything for me. I guess the first live show I saw was Mitch Ryder in maybe the late 60s in uh, Orlando, Florida. And I saw uh, the band Spirit once, and there was just something... Uh, their guitar player, Randy California, wasn't with them that night, but there was just... I don't know, it's just one of those things that's difficult to put into words. It, it, it just moved me. Um, what about what about jazz-wise? What, uh, what was an early show or... Who are some influences on you in the jazz world? Well, I didn't see a whole lot of jazz shows because I was wasn't living near anywhere where you know, like New York or Chicago or wherever, which had you know, kind of large scenes, and you could go, you know, see Thelonious Monk or something like that. Uh, so my introduction was was, was on records. And uh, late at night, uh, maybe 1968, shortly after John Coltrane died, I was listening to uh, like an underground radio station back when that was the thing, FM, in the 60s. And the DJs could 
you know, play whatever they wanted, like you, I suppose. Yeah. And so they played a a cut from an album called uh, John Coltrane's uh, his, his Best Years or something like that. And I think the track name was Invocation to Ohm. So it was one of his, you know, very later uh, iterations of his group. Um, you know, that had Rashida Lee and Pharaoh Sanders and Alice Coltrane on it. And uh, so that, uh, I guess that was the entryway for listening to, you know, what was to me a, a deeper and more communicative uh, style of music. So everyone out there, you know, when as a musician, as a professional musician, there's things that motivate you. There's a lot of things that go into it. But what is what is it that you like the best about being a professional musician? About being a professional musician? Yes. Well, uh, I, 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 I love live performances. And I like it when... Because uh, music, uh, for me and... and I would imagine most musicians, uh, it's a process of sharing something very deep uh, and in some ways personal uh, and kind of sharing that with an audience who can, uh, you know, there's just these, these deep, uh, I'm running out of words, these, these deep things <laughs> Uh, that we can share with each other. There's, there's like a, um, um, just, uh, together as a group. I'm, I'm, I'm not communicating it very well. Um, but, but I like that. And, and, and what motivates me is, is the, the, the deepest of, of, of feelings and, and also music that, maybe sort of transcends the emotion, you know, this sort of, I don't know, abstract beauty or, or whatever you would call it. And being able to and being able to share that, I think those are the two things. So what is the best thing about playing the pedal steel guitar? What is it that maybe people don't realize about the instrument? What is it that you like the best about it? Well, the pedal steel is a baby of an instrument. So what I like about it, among other things, I mean, it, it it's a, in, in, in many ways, it's, it's, it's a guitar or, or maybe halfway between a guitar and a, a zither or something. But um, with the pedals and with the volume pedal, uh, the, the pedal steel can, um, the pedals change change the pitch on certain strings. Uh, you can you can get a more of a it can express I think more than say sometimes the guitar or the piano though it's you know structurally maybe halfway between those two um, and the fact that there's just so many kinds of music that can be played with it and 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 it, and it has a voice that I think can really enrich those forms of music. If you could if you could get into some kind of a time machine and go back in time and see any performer live, who would you love to have gone back to see? Oh, I don't know. That's a hard one. There's so many people. Uh, being honest, maybe John Coltrane. Uh uh, I would have said Olivier Messiaen playing the organ, but I, I think John Coltrane, especially in his, his later groups, uh, I think that would have been a, an amazing thing to witness live. For sure. So I, I, my, my final question here is everyone out there has a perception of you. 
family, friends, fans, but ultimately you're in control. You run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? What's the perception of who I think I am? Yeah, your perception. I mean, everybody around you has this idea of who they think you are, but ultimately you're the one that's living your life. So what is your perception of you? Who do you think you are? I'm just, I guess, another human being on this planet for, uh, you know, a certain amount of time. And uh, I, enjoy, I, I like playing music, and it's like a part of my body, express, the expression it gives me. Uh, and I, I try to do right by people, and, uh, and sometimes I try to figure out uh, what it is we're all here in this, uh, in this world for. I guess that would be it. Nothing special about me. <laughs> so if anyone out there wants to learn about, you know, live shows, pick up your music, anything more about you, where's the best place to go? Uh, these days I would say probably social media, probably Facebook. Uh, I have a web page, uh, SusanAlcorn.net, uh, which has a lot of information about my my take on music but I, I i don't i don't update it as often as as i should so may, maybe facebook i don't know excellent susan thank you so much for your time thank you for your story uh best of luck with everything have a great holiday season thanks joe you too Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players and minds in Texas, Kansas City, and spots all over the globe giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Susan for her time, energy, and cool. If you want to hear more Neon Jazz interviews, you can find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to us at YouTube, and for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Jazz.